Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Event MB video. Today, I'm joined by Patrick Smith, CMO of Cvent. I'm very excited for the chat ahead. Um, Cvent is uh, the biggest uh, event technology company uh, around. So there's a lot of questions that we obviously have. Um, there's a lot that happened. Uh, before the pandemic, there's a lot that is happening now. There's the whole virtual event uh, technology revolution and uh, cannot be happier to have uh, Patrick joining us. Welcome, Patrick. Thanks so much, Julius. Excited to be here. So obviously, um, I had a chat um, a little while ago uh, with Reggie Agarwal, uh, CEO of Cvent, and uh, he kind of, we were still in the summer, he kind of was laying the path ahead for what was coming on. But before we do that, I guess I wanted to ask you what's what's been 2020 uh, for, for Cvent? <laughs> yeah, you know, how many words can we be cliche about here? Unprecedented. Right. Um, you know, that, that's probably the word I would use that a lot of other people have used. Um, you know, it was an unprecedented year in many respects. I mean, um, for us, it was in many ways a year of focusing on the fundamentals, specifically our customers, employees. Um, you know, when the pandemic started really hitting in March, you know, we we're doing all we can to help our customers out in a time of need financially to give them the industry skills and Cvent training that they need to navigate through this new world of events, whether that's, um, you know, how I think about my event program now going to virtual or when I should start sourcing again, all these things, you know, we really opened up our, our training and certification to anyone for free across the industry. And it was also about helping our employees navigate through the pandemic professionally and personally. They didn't have that connection at work. Uh, people had different setups at home in terms of how they can work together. So it was a year of focusing on the fundamentals. I'd also say it was a year of grit and of pivoting and reacting quickly to what was going on around us. You know, for an example, leading our marketing team, our messaging, our content, our campaigns had to completely change last March. So all of our plans had to change. What we were telling the industry had to change because we had to react to what was going on. And it was also, I think, a year of transformation as we quickly launched a full virtual platform and created the largest, fastest growing segment of our business in our history at the same time, and, and also launched our product at our Connect event in August, um, which happened to be the largest gathering of meetings and event professionals in history. So we showcased a new product for the first time uh, in front of that huge group of people. So it was a year of transformation as well. So lots of things rolled into 2020. We're glad it's over. Uh, but we have a lot of momentum heading into 2021. You said it, we're, we're all glad it's over, but we're dealing with a 2021 that it's starting with some, some uh, a few uh, punches as well, I guess, in terms of uncertainty and what's yep. coming ahead. I guess one of the most important things um, um, that the audience wants right now is a little bit of vision and anticipation. Obviously, Cvent is extremely well positioned uh, when it gets to understanding the dynamics of the market, not only because it's a big company that deals with a lot of meetings, but also because your product portfolio is very diverse. So you have a lot of insights for what regards venues, uh, meeting planners, uh, and, and the likes. So what is the year I had? What can you tell us about what, what we're facing here? Yeah, 2021, I think it's really going to be defined by um, you know, how much progress we make with the vaccine and the pandemic, of course. I think it's going to be a year of transition, uh, but also another year of uncertainty. I, I don't think anyone knows how fast things are going to be rolled out, um, when everyone's going to feel comfortable going back to in-person meetings. Um, but it's going to be a year of transition. And But the good news is we have a light at the end of the tunnel. I think that's what we didn't have throughout a lot of 2020, but we do now. Um, and, but we're still gonna have many months of experience um, you know, dealing with pandemic conditions ahead of us, but using a lot of what we learned in 2020, hopefully. Um, the one good thing is I think organizations are much better equipped to put on virtual events now. They will remain, uh, especially in the first half of this year um, as the primary way to meet. So um, I think we're much better equipped as an industry to put on good virtual events, but I also think organizations are gonna have an eye to when in-person events are coming back. And they're going to need to determine when to factor those into their event programs. Is it the back half of the year? Do I want to do a hybrid event where I, I capitalize on the huge audience virtually, but also have an in-person element? Um, but then thinking about 2022 and getting ahead of um, in-person meetings when everyone wants to source again and, and have meetings is something they have to consider. 
But it's also obviously very important that people understand safe meetings. So I think that's going to be a huge topic this year to understand how do I put on a safe meeting? Um, how do I lay out my space so I have proper social distancing, rethinking meals, and all those sorts of things? And then how do I pull off a hybrid event if I choose to do that um, when it's safe to do so? So more questions, I think, again in 2021, but hopefully with a light at the end of the tunnel, with better experiences behind us, and also with an eye to when in-person comes back. That's what we see is going to happen uh, throughout this year. That's a fantastic overview. Obviously, uh, we share a lot of that. Um, I guess there's there's also a lot moving uh, in terms of the event technology sector specifically because, yeah. you know, uh, possibly, and, and am I exaggerating here, an eclectic sectors, sector for a while. I mean, I've, I've uh, personally witnessed Reggie's campaign to raise yeah. the profile right. and significance of event technology and, you know, with CVENT's commitment as well. Yeah. Uh, pre-pandemic with the rise of the event technologies and how that we were getting there. Obviously, the the, uh, the interest that right now event technology brands are getting for their virtual component is unprecedented in terms of uh, venture capital coming in, but also in terms of mergers and acquisitions. Um, if we think back, Cvent was probably the most active pre-pandemic yep. in terms of acquiring new companies, especially in the event app segment. Uh, how has that changed for you uh, sure. all and what's what's the plan ahead? Yep. Yeah, great question. You know, we've been very acquisitive over the years, as you pointed out, um, and it will still be a core part of our strategy to add additional talent and capabilities to our company. You know, but in a pandemic year in 2020, as I mentioned, it was all about the fundamentals. It was about hunkering down really helping our customers, employees and the industry navigate the pandemic waters. So our immediate focus was elsewhere. Um, that's why we, we didn't do um, any acquisitions last year, because we were really focused uh, in, in large part on just getting through um, the situation and focusing on the fundamentals. But with the outlook improving and with the need to meet more important and needed than ever, you know, I'd expect that, that M&A momentum will pick up on our side. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, good, good news for Event Tech, I guess, you know. Um, yeah, it is, it is interesting, Julius. It's fascinating that in a time when people couldn't meet in person, the event tech space is hotter than ever. You know, that's, you talk about making lemonade out of lemons, I think that's it. Uh, and it really focuses on the innate desire to meet that we all have. And that, that I think shined through in spades in 2020. Of course, and, and you know, as event and B, we, we tend to talk a lot about our meeting planners and their needs and how technology can help, uh, but uh, we're, Probably a lot of us in the events industry is forgetting about the impact that venues specifically are having uh, for you know the in-person component. They're the most hit. Uh, yeah. you know, at least like uh, meeting planners have an opportunity to pivot uh, yeah. to virtual. A lot of people in the event industry don't suppliers specifically and venues obviously being the core of that. They're trying to reinvent themselves. You know, being hybrid studios and all of that. Obviously, at C event, you, know, you have a lot of venue sourcing tools. Can you point us at any data that it's encouraging in this sense, or uh, what, what is the data telling you in terms of a potential comeback? Yeah, so we've been tracking that closely. And as you mentioned, the CVent Supplier Network, we really power the, um, the whole sphere of connecting marketers and planners to venues and hoteliers. So we see a ton of sourcing data on that, and we monitor it closely, and, and very regularly we're coming out to the industry with what we're seeing. But you know, right now I'd say with the surge in coronavirus cases across the Americas and Europe, we're seeing sourcing numbers that are fairly consistent even today with what we saw in the second and third quarters of 2020. So we did see some upticks, but they've gone back to, to the levels of the second and third quarter of 2020. But here's the interesting thing, even at a much lower levels than before, the numbers in the second and third quarter added up were a few billion dollars in sourcing during that period. So we continue to talk about big numbers. That surprises people when we mention that. Um, you know, but, but still, sourcing is obviously down from pre-COVID levels. Um, but we do believe that once the headlines about um, you know, vaccine distribution improving um, and spiking coronavirus cases taking a turn for the positive, we think that there's gonna be a robust return to sourcing. Um, and we're very, we're very much looking at both sourcing levels, but also when it's happening. And, and certainly keeping an eye on, um, on when we might see a, a huge 
influx of sourcing for late this year or, or 2022. Because what we don't want to do is have the industry all want to meet together and have no capacity. Interesting. Uh, do you have any any pointers right now as a specific quarter that looks better than others? Just to, uh, I know this is off the record, but I want to, uh, well, it is on record, but it's all <laughs> off a script rather. Uh, sure. what, what would you, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, Julius, it's really hard. I mean, it, it depends on so many things. I, I really do think though that that in the Q3, Q4 timeframe in the fall, I think you're going to see a lot of people safely put on meetings. Um, they might be different, they might be smaller, but um, I really think that's going to happen. And in in 2022, you're going to see a a, a big return to to in person. That's not to say virtual is going to go away at all. We don't we don't believe that. Um, but certainly, I think people are there's going to be a backlog in wanting to have the human connection um, and to shake hands or elbow bumps or whatever we need to do at that point. It's an also business travel and those dollars are going to have an impact as well because um, our company is going to let people travel. But, but we think they will if the business case is there. And that's why putting on a compelling event experience um, is, is something that will have a business case that justifies jumping on a plane. Interesting. And I guess it's a, it's a great advice for meeting planners thinking about 2021 and, you know, their plans for their events, you know, spring, fall, you know, definitely focus on where the risk is less. That's, that's the advice for sure. Um, so let's talk virtual. Obviously, Cvent is committed to virtual. You have uh, created a suite of tools in yeah. that sense. I asked Reggie back at uh, the beginning of the virtual revolution, uh, we were already talking about Zoom fatigue. Mm -hmm. uh, what is uh, what is the state right now? What what do you see are the trends that kind of uh, are uh, impacting virtual in terms of the attendee experience and consumption of virtual events? Yeah, so you know it's a great question. I think clearly the space is hot, as your recent article <laughs> pointed out. Um, you know, everyone still has to live with attending meetings each day from behind their screen. So I guess the question of whether are people tired of virtual events, if, if you're tired of being behind a screen, then you'll be tired of virtual events, but you'll be tired of just about everything else too, because that, that's the world we're at. So it really all comes down to the right content and, and being able to have an engaging experience. You know, is your content interesting enough that it's worth people's precious time to attend? That are you going to learn and be inspired? Is it worth it for you to learn a tip or trick that can change your business or to inspire your team? Can you interact with others um, you know, on a virtual platform to ask questions and chat and those sorts of things? If, if you can have an experience that is compelling, is interesting, teaches you things, allows you to meet other people and connect that way, then um, virtual events are, are going to be, you know, certainly attended and demanded in the industry. And, and that's, I think, the organizations that know how to do it right um, have really leveraged those factors. And obviously, you need a technology platform to enable you to do that. Um, I think one of the things is we've learned a lot about how to structure virtual events. You know, just because someone's behind a computer screen doesn't mean they don't need breaks. In many cases, you might think you can have longer sessions because you don't have to travel to another room. We find it's even better to have shorter sessions because of Zoom fatigue. Um, you know, we think about high production values and giving people the, the great way to showcase their content and the production tools to allow their event to shine through a computer screen. So you have to think about TV shows and high production values and those sorts of things. Um, and, and that's what makes a, a virtual event great. But at the end of the day, if the question is, are virtual events here to stay or are they just a passing fad? We think they're gonna be here to stay, but the key is threading them into your full events program thoughtfully because the answer isn't to go all virtual. The answer isn't to go all in person. The answer is to figure out your full event program and to, to come up with the right event type to fit your needs and what you're trying to accomplish. And to have a technology platform that allows you to leverage all that data together that can run a full event program in person, hybrid and virtual. So you have one version of the truth on your event program. Who attended your last two virtual events that you want to have attend on site? Who attended on site that would be great for your next virtual series that you're having? Those sorts of, of, of intertwined information is, is what's going to, to really rule the day, we think, in the future. Um, so the state of virtual events, still hot will remain important, but aren't going to take the place of in-person events forever. It's fantastic. It's almost like we're heading towards our redefinition of experience design that mm -hmm. uh, 
keeps Alberto in mind as well. Um, and, uh, and therefore, uh, probably a redefinition of the whole event experience in general, which is- Yeah, exactly. And Julius, I'll, I'll even throw something in here too. And a hybrid event, a lot of people think that's, that's always having that, um, that one event or two experiences where you have the same people at the same time watching an event, but that's certainly a, a model, but also having engaging digital elements before an event happens and after event happens, even for your in-person audience, is a form of hybrid that we think is also going to be important. So you, you, you're meeting people ahead of time, you have the right content to consume either before or after or both during your event. So um, there's no question that what we saw over the last year and a half um, is, has been the digital transformation of events really accelerating. And that understanding that events can be digitized, that's the best thing to come out of this virtual event landscape, the great data that I can get. And that's going to be a best practice that people who haven't leveraged it for in-person events will leverage in the future, having technology power what's going on with your attendees so you can understand patterns and data and so forth. Um, that's going to be really important. So digitization is what software does. We've needed it in the event tech space. We've been in that space for a while as Cvent, but the rise of virtual events has meant the digitization of events, which we think is a great thing for all event types, including in person. Yeah, no, that's a that's a fascinating concept, and obviously, when a lot of people are finding a, a short term solution, a lot of those uh, planners are focused on just the experience as such and ease of implementation. But in the long run, uh, the data has to come back; otherwise, there's no. Uh, business justification for what we're doing. So yep. uh, very interesting to see how that evolves. Um, speaking about event tech, obviously uh, you have an uh, incredible amount of tools available for planners to um, enforce their uh, in-person and, and virtual events. What are planners wanting though? How has that evolved uh, between the start of this uh, sort of a pandemic and now? Like what are they focused on right now? Yeah, so, so planners um, really have a mission to build and are deep in a relationship with their audience. I mean, that's, that's why we meet, is to build relationships and get information across. So you do that by providing engaging content, building a community that each audience member can participate in and gain value, and, and building a community that a sponsor wants to tap into uh, as well, you know, so you can monetize your events. You know, in, in some cases, um, you know, at virtual events, they want to showcase products in a demo environment, such as a traditional trade show. So what, what planners want is virtual platforms that are built around these factors and, and these needs. Um, but I think that the key thing, and, and I hit this before, is event organizers have a great opportunity to use the digital data from virtual events to understand attendee interests, ensure the most optimal follow-up. When you take your data, if you're running events for sales and marketing reasons and you take great attendee information, you can quickly act on that um, for the best follow-up, whether that's the next best sales action or a customer that's showing interest in something or has an issue that you want to solve. Seeing what they're interested in can give you that information to follow up quickly and effectively. And also, does, you can design your next event better with what you learned. And you know, leveraging data is a foundational element in our virtual platform, the Cvent Virtual Attendee Hub. You know, you can capture a ton of unique attendee data that seamlessly rolls into our attendee engagement score. Um, so it's, it's really important that you think about a virtual platform in any event tech platform from a data perspective and what it can give you that informs attendee interests um, and how to build the next great event. That's, that's fantastic. And I guess it goes back also uh, to, you know, one of the most exciting uh, papers you released last year about the rise of the event technologist and right. how uh, you know the profession of some meeting planners that may be out of work as well right now, it's pivoting to that and creating a strategic value through the use of data or a synchronous attendance as well uh, for attendees to enjoy and how that can become a key player, uh, uh, a key tool in the B2B marketing uh, portfolio. So very fascinating. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, we're out of time. Um, I cannot thank you enough for um, sharing with us your insight. Um, we obviously want everybody to check um, the suite of tools and information and accreditation that Cvent is uh, um, helping the industry with right now. Thank you a lot for uh, your leadership and for shipping amazing products. 
Yeah, thank you, Julius. It's a pleasure being on your program and uh, best of luck to you and the industry uh, in 2021.